So you decided you want to play War Thunder in VR. You watched tons of tutorials, but you're still not sure, can the game run smoothly? Well, don't worry. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the different settings that you need to set up for your PC, not only for the game, in order to experience War Thunder in VR. I'm going to break down the video into segments so you can follow along way more easily. Since there are a lot of things we need to cover, let's jump in right into it. <laughs> I'm using MetaQuest 2 VR headset, but if you're using a MetaQuest 3 or MetaQuest 3S or Pico 4 VR headset, this guide is going to be mostly oriented towards you. But don't worry, if you're running the game with a Valve Index or any other VR headset out there, I'm going to cover those as well. I personally prefer to play War Thunder wirelessly, so we have three different options to do that. The first one is the MetaQuest Link app, which comes directly from MetaQuest. The second one is the Virtual Desktop, which also works for Pico 4 and MetaQuest. And the last one is the Steam VR Link that you can use for all VR headsets. <laughs> When we talk about optimizations, especially for VR and in our case War Thunder, there are two very important settings that people overlook a lot of the times. The first one is called XMP Profile and we can check that if we go to the Task Manager and in Performance. And here we need to make sure that our RAM memory is running at maximum speeds. If it's not, don't worry. I'm going to leave a few videos into the description so you can go out and check is your XMP Profiles enabled in your BIOS. The second option that we need to check is, is the resizable bar also enabled? For this, go to your NVIDIA control panel if you have an NVIDIA GPU, go in help and in system information. And here, if resizable bar is on, you're good to go. If it's not, I'm going to leave video in the description so you can see how you can go and enable this. But basically, this will provide us with much more smoother experience when we start optimizing the game. If you've seen other guides and you have other games that uses OpenXR, great, leave them. But whatever you do, do not enable OpenXR toolkit. The main reason not to do that is because you're going to run into problems like this one. What you're seeing on the screen right now is me recording the VR experience of War Thunder through my heads. And as you can see, the picture is glitching. I'm not moving my head or anything. What is happening is OpenXR is fighting with DirectX 12 for some unknown reason and everything is glitching. And simply because OpenXR is no longer supported by Microsoft, I would highly recommend you not to use it in the future. <laughs> Before we jump into War Thunder and start tweaking the settings in the game, first we need to make sure that some external settings for War Thunder are adjusted into the NVIDIA control panel. First, go to NVIDIA control panel, go to manage 3 settings, go to program settings, and here make sure you have War Thunder's ASUS EXE selected. Next, let's change some of the settings. On image scaling, make sure this is set to off. For anti-isotropic filtering, make sure it's application controlled. Make sure that MFA sampled A is turned off. This option used to work greatly, but for some reason this functionality started to cause more problems than solutions, so I would highly recommend you to switch this off. For power management, many people will tell you to use maximum performance, but I would highly recommend you to use normal. Your GPU is smart enough to use maximum performance when needed, so you don't need your computer running at 100% maximum power all the time. Next. Make sure that texture filtering anti-isotropic sample option is turned on and for texture filtering negative load bias is set to clamp. For texture filtering quality, make sure you use global setting for quality. For texture filtering three-planar optimization, make sure this is off. And for threaded optimization, make sure this is on auto. Finally, for virtual reality pre-rendered frames, I've set it this to four. And depending on what kind of system you have, you can set it to whatever number you want. Usually it's by default to one. And this is basically how many frames your CPU can prepare for your GPU before they get sent to the GPU. When you set it to a higher number, what is happening is you're basically increasing the buffer that your CPU can prepare for your GPU. Many people say that setting this setting to 4 will cause you dizziness and so on and I can tell you for sure in War Thunder that's not the case so I would highly recommend you to experiment with the setting and choose whatever works for you best but for me it's at 4. <laughs> To keep this video simplified, I'm gonna just go through the settings quickly and show you what you should use and from that point on you can tweak those but those are gonna be as a baseline. <laughs> 
Go to options, go to graphics. Here, make sure you're playing on full screen or on windows. For graphics API, use DirectX 12, or if you're running on an older machine, use DirectX 11. For anti-aliasing method, switch this to off. None of the methods below will help you, and I've tested all of them, and I've read a lot of com comments and other things on the forums. So for best visibility in the game, switching this setting to off will help you in the long run. For anti isotropy switch this to 16. SSA is basically upscaling so we don't need to do that we're gonna do that later on so keep that to none for graphics quality keep texture at medium high will cause you problems right now there's a bug in the game so keep that to medium for shadow quality keep this to high for water quality i use high for water effects quality i use medium for quads quality in flight and on ground i keep the setting at medium for reflection quality keep this at low this does not affect you in vr effects resolution keep this at medium ssao quality turn this off you don't need this for tire tracks i use medium cockpit mirror reflections quality i use high because i want to see on my mirrors inside of my vr headset global illumination quality i keep this at high for having a prettier game for physics quality keep this at high because you want to see everything being destroyed at its maximum quality so for terrain displacement quality keep this at high at for tree range keep this at low particle density go with medium turn off grass you don't need this in vr small object shadows turn this off for advanced shore heat haze far terrain details and lens flare i keep this on because they make the game prettier in vr so if you don't like them you can switch this off don't run the retracing on vr you will not notice the difference especially in planes for tanks and other vehicles sure but for flying just gonna put a strain on your system and you don't need that if you plan to record in vr turn this on for vr display mode this is which i you're going to use to record vr gameplay and for motion blur strength turns to zero because you're gonna run into problems the way that motion blur is being calculated for the game does not work properly in vr so i would highly recommend switching this off and finally in post effect settings if you play on pc and you have the setting off make sure that and click the zone and adjust the sharpness for your cockpit and third person view accordingly like this unless you want to run into problems first let's talk about my preferred method to connecting to my vr headset and that's using virtual desktop this works for all metaquest headsets as well as pico 4 make sure that you have the Streamware app downloaded and also you have the application installed on your VR headset as well. This application costs around $20, but trust me, it's a worthy investment. So if you want to have the best experience out there, I would highly recommend using virtual desktop. Once we have the application running, go to options and change the following. For preferred codec, make sure you're using HVAC 10-bit and you have adaptive quantization on. If you're using a MetaQuest free headset, use the AV1 10-bit codec because it's better optimized for all quite, uh, Quest 3 headsets. Next, for OpenXR, use the VDXR Open Runtime. This is an implementation of uh, OpenXR, but well, much more well optimized from Virtual Desktop. Another option you have is the Steam VR, and I've tried that, but personally, I prefer VDXR. For gamepad emulation, leave this to automatic, and for audio streaming, make sure that your VR headset only is enabled and you have virtual audio driver enabled. Over here, leave those settings as you prefer, but personally, I just start this with Windows. Next, let's jump, let's jump into my headset and see what settings we need to set up there. Inside of the headset, there are a few things that we need to tweak first. First, go to settings. Go to display and brightness and make sure that you have 120 Hz refresh rate enabled. Having this feature on is important because later on we're going to tweak it and by having this turned on it will not affect your headset. You just enable the option to have 120 Hz inside your headset, so keep that on. Next, let's open virtual desktop. Press the settings option on the joystick. Go to settings. Here, turn off use optimal resolution. Next, go to streaming. Here, set your VR graphics quality to high or ultra depending on what system you have. Basically, this will tell your headset what kind of resolution to use when streaming. Next, change your VRA frame rate to 90 because this is the targeted frame rate that we're gonna go for. But later on, I'm gonna talk about the 120 FPS as well. For VR bitrate, set this to 150. For sharpening, change that to 75. 
also disable synchronous space warp we will enable that later and i'm going to give you a few examples when you want to use it and finally use video buffering this will reduce small stutters and occasional stutters when you have the vr headset with remote connection play one more thing in order to run word thunder inside of vr through virtual desktop go to games and your game should appear over here and through here you start word thunder in vr for everybody who uses only MetaQuest and they want to use the Oculus Quest Link app, go to Devices, make sure that your VR headset is added here. After that, go to your Quest headset by clicking on it, go to Graphics and change your refresh rate to 120 and lower the render resolution to 1.3. Press Save and Restart. And once that's done, there's one more setting that we need to tweak. Go to Settings, to General. And here, make sure that OpenXR runtime is set as MetaQuest link as active OpenXR runtime. One more thing that we need to change, go to the location where your Oculus Quest application is installed, go to support, Oculus Diagnostics, and here you should have Oculus Debugging to open it. And here we're going to change the following. For use false uh, stencil, change this to auto, and for space warp, select this and disable it. Finally, close this and restart Oculus Quest Link app. So in case you're using Valve Index or PSVR 2, you're probably going to use Steam to play War Thunder in VR. So what I can recommend you is to go to settings here in remote play, make sure that enable remote play is enabled and you have paired your VR headset over here. Next, make sure that you have Steam VR installed. <laughs> So for everybody running Valve Index or PSVR or any other VR headset that uses cable connection directly to your GPU, those settings that we've done so far should be good enough. So now we can go and test out how much FPS we're getting into the game. First, go to the plane that you want to try, go to test flight, switch to simulator. I'm going to spawn at 2 kilometers above the airfield so I can test how the plane behaves in flight. And once we're in the game, look at the bottom of your screen and see what kind of FPS you're running. If you have a stable 90 FPS, that's great. And this guide should work perfectly for you. But if you have a lower FPS, don't worry. For everybody using a Quest VR headset or a Pico 4, I'm gonna show you a few tricks that you can use to boost your FPS to go above 90. So this part of the video is going to be mostly focused for people that use Virtual Desktop or Oculus Quest Link. But first, let's talk about what is Space Warp and how does it work. What you're seeing on the screen are two different versions. The one on the left has Space Warp off and we're running the game at 45 FPS. And on the right, what you're seeing is the game running smoothly at 90 FPS. But what's actually happening is what you're seeing on the left is the game being limited at 45 FPS intentionally and on the right is what you're seeing inside of the VR headset. So Space Warp basically works like a duplication of virtual frames. So the game limits what you're rendering in order to get a better boost of your FPS inside of the VR headset. But let's break it down and give you more examples so you'll get a better understanding how Space Warp can help you. Let's say you're running your VR headset and you're getting between 45 and 55 FPS. Your baseline is 45 FPS at low. So what we can do in this kind of situation is enable space warp. So it's going to cap at our lowest setting, in our case 45 FPS, and it's going to double those frames inside of the VR headset itself. So this way we're going to end up with a 90 Hz refresh rate and 90 FPS inside of our VR headset. But let's say you're running the game with a stable 60 to 80 FPS, but you're not getting 90, don't worry. Now you can take full advantage of that 120 Hz that we've enabled earlier. All you need to do is enable space warp and the game is gonna cap at 60 FPS, but you're gonna see 120 frames inside of your VR headset. Don't worry if the game shows you that you have only 60 FPS, that's fine. Basically you're capping your system to render at this frame rate, but inside of the VR headset you're taking the full advantage of the 120 Hz. Alright, so those are the settings that I'm using and I hope that everything I managed to show you will help you one way or another. Let me know down into the comments, did any of those settings actually help you and did you get a better understanding of how your VR headset actually works. Thank you for watching and feel free to join me in the comments if you have further questions or if you want to ask something specifically about Word Thunder, I'll be more than happy to help. Till next time.